When we received the news of the plane hitting the towers, we were all in disbelief. Our brains couldn't wrap around this unbelievable event, and as the survivors and bodies were found, with their stories unfolding, it became a reality we will never forget. Welcome to Calm in the Chaos, where we try to make sense of events and natural occurrences and how they relate to us on a soul level. 2,977 people were killed on purpose that day, including 184 at the Pentagon and 40 in Pennsylvania. We ask for love to be sent to those who will never get over the loss of 21 years ago. During the past 30 months, 6,503,329 people worldwide have died from COVID-19 and related variants. Pause and send love to those families who have an empty seat at their tables due to this virus. I believe that it's worth noting that the first of these enormous losses brought many of the factions of our nation together, while the second loss tore us apart. We must be aware of how we change lenses when we view current events. Before the towers fell, September 11th had already had a huge significance for me. It's the day I became a mother. My genetic code was passed on to another generation of humans as I birthed my first child on September 11th. And with the birth of this child, I realized the power of a family's gene pool. Some have said that this daughter looks like my clone, which annoyed her for decades, of course, but has recently been accepted. Our faces are similar right down to a little bump on the side of our left nostrils. Her hair is of the same texture and weight. Body shape is similar and we both have wide feet. And unless you're asked to find her in a crowd of thousands, none of this matters because our bodies are not who we are. Our bodies are not who we are. And yet we've learned through culture, through parenting, through comments from others that we are constantly judged by how our bodies look. How we feel about those comments and how we feel about what we see in the mirror affects our souls. It creates a narrative of who we are. And that is the topic of today's God Talk because our bodies are not who we are. We are created in the image of the Creator and you may ask, well, how can the Creator possibly encompass every skin tone, every eye shape, every curve, every muscle definition, every inseam length, and every variation of body on the planet? How can the Creator have every natural color and texture of hair? And if we really believe that every single one of us is the image of the Creator, how can that one entity be both blind and sighted, hearing and deaf, ambulatory and legless? How does this work? Because our bodies are not who we are. We are not physically created in the image of God, however you define that term, because God is not a singular physical being. We are created in the heart, the spirit, the soul of God, all of us, every human on the planet, even those who are grossly misguided in their actions. We are souls with beginnings way before we were conceived in a set of cells in a womb, and we will continue to be souls long after the cells that make up our bodies cease to be oxygenated and are cremated or buried. 
souls. That's who we are. That's who you are. The soul is the energy of each of us that connects with one another when we're miles apart. Twins and other multiples are not the only people who can sense one another's energy fields. Has your phone ever rung and you instantly knew who it was? Or have you had an inkling that a friend was hurt or lonely or desperate and when you contacted her, you were the port in her storm because you already knew? This is because our souls know one another, especially souls who've had significant connections in face-to-face -face interactions. Now, our bodies give us a lot to think about, especially in the form of having COVID or when an organ explodes with cancer cells or when we have a broken bone or muscle fatigue or even seasonal allergies. But we are not our bodies. To foster spiritual maturity, we should strive to align body and soul, to allow soul to steer the ship and to understand that the body is the ship. Masters in the world of advertising encourage us to obsess over body parts. We're too thin, we're too short, we're too wrinkled, we're too saggy. Insurance companies have created charts to show ideal weight and height proportions, which can predict when a person's life insurance policy may need to pay up. There are numbers that can allay our worries or create new ones. Numbers from medical professionals that represent sugar levels, cholesterol levels, blood pressure, and numbers from physical therapy that represent the angle of the bend in the knee, the wrist, the curvature of the spine. We can be overwhelmed by numbers that tell us about bodies, numbers that draw us away from our souls, numbers that focus on the bodies the bodies being who we are. So, we must balance. We must balance the feeding and nurturing of our souls every day, the way we feed and nurture our bodies. We must not allow the physical details to become the only focus of our thoughts and the only driving force of our daily activities. As I reach my 10,000 steps on Fitbit, is there a way to track how many times I consciously chose to not make a negative comment? As I step on the scale at my Saturday morning Weight Watchers meeting, is there a place to weigh the box of burdens that I have lifted for another this week? Balance spirit and body. I offer this small one minute activity to add to your spiritual practices each day. Select a, a set time, perhaps after morning prayer or in a place, in place of the, the usual grace that you might say at a meal and thank your housing, your body for giving your soul a place to land and live. You might thank a specific part of your body each day or send gratitude that you can walk, that you can carry groceries, that you can smile and do the things that some of us take for granted. Thank our bodies. But our bodies are not who we are. They provide a canvas and the paints for us to create the souls that we need to be. Keeping our bodies in shape allows us to carry on the work of spirit. It allows us to show up at the soup kitchen and gives us the strength to escort a scared young woman into a health clinic. Staying in tune with our bodies is paramount to living the life we want. But whether we be bound to a wheelchair or use a cane, whether we compete in triathlons or swim in a creek, whether we climb mountains or need assistance to use a spoon. Our bodies are not who we are. We are the love, the understanding, 
the joy, the helpfulness, the thinking, the creating, the forgiveness. Thank your eyes for seeing the beauty in a new baby's sweet face. Thank your hands for knitting a hat, for peeling potatoes, for smoothing a blanket on a bed, for wiping away a tear. Thank your legs for carrying you through the aisles of the grocery store to fill your cart with items for the food shelf. Thank your ears for taking in the music of the wind and for listening to the cries of the homeless. Thank your skin for enjoying the raindrops, for petting a kitten, for enjoying the fuzz of a peach. Our bodies are not who we are, but our body and soul can connect and become one so that a physical ailment or an injury is balanced by the soul's knowledge that all will be well. The body tries to heal itself in ways not yet fully known to us. And if the body does not heal itself in a way that we consider to be whole once again, our soul takes over and accepts, accepts that the body is not who we are. The soul, who has always been steering the ship, now asserts itself more fully and reminds us of our capacity to be in the image of God, to be the image of joy, the forgiveness, deep compassion, acceptance, and peace. That's what we strive for, a balance of body and soul, a oneness of truly who we are. Let's pray together. Maha Kundalini Shakti, Mother, Father, God, Holy Spirit, Adonai, Great Spirit in the Sky, Allah, we come to you as grateful people, grateful for ears to hear, hands to work, feet to walk, eyes to see. May we use our bodies to commune with nature and with your children so that we can connect more fully with you. Give us wisdom to know how to balance body and soul in our daily activities. We come to you in remembrance and sorrow. This day will forever be a memory of the dark side of humanity, and yet you created us all. You gave us choices to behave on our own, and it allows for us to learn the lessons of rising above tragedy helps us to have the strength to be loving and forgiving in spite of another's ugliness. We send love to those who are forever changed by losses, whether it be from accident, terror, or disease. Help us to continue to manifest great love no matter what befalls us. Hear our personal prayers as we whisper them to you. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Amen. Alan Jackson's famous song, When the World Stopped Turning, is our music recommendation today. The lyrics ask us to look at what really matters and to remember that love is the greatest of the faith, hope, and love trio. He asks us if we called our mothers or dusted off our Bibles that day. Or did we notice the sunset for the first time in ages? As we united in the weeks that followed, we attended church more than ever after the 9-11 21 years ago. We hugged one another more. We paid attention. We showed up. May we remember those unifying feelings and actions as we continue to walk forward. Blessings on all.